Hello there and welcome back. My name is Elena. And I'm Fotios. And this is the Game Court. And today let's talk about Martin Wallace. Martin Wallace is one of the most prominent uh, designers in the board game industry. He has designed quite a lot of games. And some very good, some, some not that very good. And we have played quite a few of them, so we'll be discussing about it today. And before we dive into the, the games themselves, one thing that we should mention about Martin Wallace that we have read online and uh, we, we think that that's true is that uh, when he designs a game, he starts with a the theme of the game and then he builds the mechanics around the theme. Which and I think we, is super awesome. In fact, it's quite interesting. And most of his games are quite thematic in that sense. We are going to present you the games in uh, the order of publication rather than the way we actually play them and you'll understand at the end why we actually did that. Mm -hmm. That being said, let's give it a go. First game on the list is Age of Steam. Uh, and there is a controversy with Age of Steam because, you know, there is a controversy who is actually the designer of Age of Steam, if it is Martin Wallace or John Boher. And we have read several forums online, but we present this here as a game by Martin Wallace. And Age of Steam has uh, basically a lot of versions. The original was 2002. And then we, we owned at some point the 2008 version, but then later on, Eagle Griffon Games has also republished this at the looks Age of Steam version with Ian O'Toole art at 2019. Age of Steam is a 1-6 to six player game where you try to outperform your rivals with shares, auctions, track building and deliveries. And of course, you know, there are several maps in Age of Steam and each map is better for different player count. I think the bigger maps are better for 3-5 to five or 6 players. So not, not very much a 2 player game or a solo player game, even if some maps are quite small and tight. But generally speaking, it's a higher play, player count. Player count game. Yeah, I mean, most train games don't really play very well with other player interactions. Mm. And most of Martin Wallace's games do play better at higher player count. Although we'll mention which ones we actually like at lower player count. And I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. quite awesome because yes. they do work. So in Age of Steam, you take several actions. You may lay some trap to connect different cities. You may do a bit of pickup and delivery. You may uh, increase your income. There's also some auction aspect for player order and everything. There might be also some player elimination. And uh, as a standard, let's say, train game, whenever you build a track in a, in a particular position, you have to pay the cost depending on what the ground is, if it is a field or if it is mountain, the, the harder to, or if it is a, a, a river and you have to cross the river or whatever. So the, the more difficult it is, the more you have to pay to lay the track. Given that we played this game a little while ago and mm -hmm. we played it only a handful of times, I don't remember it 100%, mm -hmm. but I do remember that it was a, a matter of you could build your own network, um, but also your opponents could use your network and you could use yours, but you will have to pay them to use the network to deliver stuff. And I think I didn't like this aspect very, very much. I think it was a bit too much competition in there for me. I didn't like it very much. I remember that. Yeah, not my cup of tea. Yeah, I think uh, Age of Steam is uh, a game that is uh, closer to 18xx. It's not necessarily an 18xx game, but it's somewhere between, let's say, an 18xx game and Ticket to Ride. Somewhere in between. Elena likes to call it Ticket to Ride. <laughs> I mean, Steam. people will hate me now, but you know, I played it and I was like, is this Ticket to Ride on steroids? <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not Ticket to Ride, but you know, it 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 more. It's more close to an 18xx game uh, than to uh, Ticket to Ride. Hey, everybody yeah. has their own opinions. Right, you cannot like every single game, all right? For <laughs> me, it's Ticket to Ride on steroids. So what? <laughs> but yeah, it didn't stay in our collection for two reasons, basically. First, it requires a lot of plays to be played. And second, Elena doesn't really fancy it, so yeah. So that's that. The next game we talk about is called La Strada. And this game was published in 2004 by Cosmos Games and by Mayfair Games. It's a 2-4 to four player game, but... Basically, it plays best at four. You can play also at two, but each player will have, let's say, two companies or two colors. And, yeah, yeah, and you want everybody to have their own mind yes. and do their own thing in there. It's different interaction. It does work better in four. Yes. So in La Strada, it's a, a networking. It's a building your network game and connecting different cities and villages and, uh, and different places, basically. And it's a very simplified version of uh, an 18xx or a ticket or an Age of Steam game. I would say more is more like instead of a building your net your network, I'd say it's more like building building your territory rather than your network. Mm. Mm, that's how I think of it. Because what okay. you do is you 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 try to separate the cities and the little villages away from everybody else to connect to them, right? Yes, that's the whole you, idea. You try to 
it's also a bit of a majority in the sense that you try to block your opponents from going mm -hmm. to a particular because at the end of the game what, what scores is the number of cubes on a particular place like each player can have one cube in a place right so if elena is alone at that place she will get more points whereas if we are together in that place we will get it will less be less points. valuable yes exactly the the more the more desired the space that you're going to, the less points you're going to get. So the idea is to try to block your opponents. Technically, you just build rail everywhere, and you can build rail on different terrains. Mm -hmm. And it depends on where you build. Some opponents you you block your opponents because this is their only one way one ways. You mm -hmm. cannot build multiple rails on one journey. And whomever builds, you know, the most extent wins. I think. The, the, whoever has the most points. Yeah. yeah. And uh, of course you have uh, action points in this game that you can spend at each turn and these action points refresh in the next turn or if you don't spend them they have even they more action yes. points. And the action points can be spent the same way as Age of Steam by building rails on different terrains that cost different, uh, different number different of action, action points. Different action points, yes. I would call La Strada a filler for 18xx players. Mm, I think <laughs> it's a very light version of a train game. Yes, correct. And it's not a bad game and it's a fast game, so people that don't like long games, it's a very good game. Half an hour maximum, I would say, to play. Yeah. yeah. Next on our list is Brass Lancashire, published in 2007 and then republished in 2018. It's a two to four player game published by Roxley Games, uh, where you try to test your economic metal as you build and network in the industrial revolution. This is one of the most renowned games by Martin Wallace. Uh, one of the most known games as well. So there are two versions of Brass. This is Brass Lancashire. We'll discuss about the other version a bit later on in the game, in the, in the video. In the game. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a heavy industry manufacturing game. Again, you build your networks, you have uh, two eras here, you have the canal era and you have the train era. This takes place in uh, the Lancashire uh, district region, yeah. region in, uh, in England. In this game every player starts with a number of cards in their hands that they can use as action points and you can only take two actions per turn. Uh, you try desperately and vividly to build your own industries which are very many in this game and we'll talk about that in a second and you try to develop your network and you try to do that before your opponents do because there is only one network to be built per way so if somebody takes that network you probably have to go around or you know, uh, yes. kill your opponent or something easier than that because it's very hard to go around and build some more network around it. As soon as you get the hang of what networking means and how this applies to it, the game will make a lot of sense. It's quite a heavy economic mm. game and it's quite hard to understand what the network entails and how you actually build from there. Um, but as soon as you realize what that is, technically what you do is you develop your network by building canals or trains mm. and then you build industries that you you build and sell forward so you can develop your money track and your point track. So you have a coal industry, you have iron industries, you have manufactured goods, you have a shipyards in this particular game, this particular yes. brass version. Um, and the other cool aspect about the game is that there is this shared economy. So if I have a, an industry with coal, Elena can use my coal for free. But if all my coal is used by my industry, my industry is going to be flipped and it's going to give me income and victory points. Also, this game comes with a cotton market mm -hmm. where you can sell your cotton mills. You can actually just sell them as they are to any shipyard or you can sell it to the cotton market where you have a bit of a bidding phase, which is not really a bidding phase, it's just it's like, like a, a random element, of, a the random game, element yeah. of the game. But that might yield you more, more income, income yeah. if anything, mm -hmm. when you sell it. And you can only do it so many times because there are some of them that just give you zero, so that would be a nothing. Mm -hmm. So you'll have to, you know, choose wisely if you want to sell it on the cotton market or just sell it as you normally sell it, which I think is a cool aspect of the game. So overall, Brass Lancashire is a highly interactive game. Super tight. Super tight. Super and, bitey. And the new version 2018 comes with two versions of the map. One is better for two players, uh, even more tight, which is, I think, very good. Very good to have different maps for two different faces of the board rather than have an empty face on mm. the back of the board. Um, but it's a super nice game, we really enjoyed both this and Brass uh, Birmingham, which we're going to discuss in a sec. The next game in our list is London, and particularly London, the second edition. It's the first edition published in 2010, but this is the second edition published in 2017 by Osprey Games, and it's a 2 to 4 player game. And in this game, what you do, you are trying to build or rebuild, rebuild London. London, yes, and basically have an engine of cards and uh, industries in London that uh, provide you money but also give you 
poverty. The game plays fairly easily with a tableau of cards opened already for you where you can select cards. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with three decks of cards and they get better as the game goes as mm -hmm. you go through the cards. A, B and C, you yes. You have a lot of poppers through them that will will, cl will clutter your hand. You Bl can take bloody poppers. Bloody poppers everywhere. Yes. Poppers everywhere. They give you a lot yes. of poverty and it's not very good and it's hard to get rid of them. Because but they do cl <laughs> they clutter your hand. Poppers, they clutter your hand. Because you have a, a hand limit, right? Yes, yeah. you have a hand limit of seven. Mm, I think so. I think it was Maybe seven eight. if I remember. Seven, eight, something four. along those lines mm -hmm. so you can either uh, pick up cards where you can develop your uh, where you can develop your city or you can pick up a borrow which will give you kind of uh, some sort of like mm. extra power or will you know discard some of your poverty or give you some extra cards if you need to pick up more cards like these mm. um, these borrows help you like an extra power you can change many borrows if you want obviously if you have money to buy borrows you can buy borrows in London <laughs> or you can run your city where you display all your cards and you run them as you can as a little engine mm. Very similar to Furnace kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Very similar yeah. to that. And then, you know, you collect your money at the end. You collect your poverty because, you know, some will give you poverty. Some will, dis they will let you discard some poverty. And then you make your exchange of money, the money that you've produced mm. and the poverty that you have or you don't have. And in the game, you have two options, basically. You can go for a very, big, building a very big city, but you have to run all of the cards which give you benefits, but also give you poverty because each card gives you one poverty. Or you can run a very, a very tight ship, a very small city. And then in this case, you get less poverty, but you have to uh, focus on particular cards or more benefits and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah. Another cool aspect of the game is the open drafting, because as uh, one player discards cards, these cards become available for the next player, and that's also quite cool. So you have to be careful which cards to discard. Poppers. <laughs> <laughs> Poppers galore, get out yes. of my hand. <laughs> The last cool aspect about this game, because I think it's an awesome game, I think, I don't think we've actually emphasized how nice this game is. It's not the most complex game, it's quite different from what Martin Wallace would do, like, you know, with trains and, and networking mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So this game is very different than what Martin Wallace would do, but it's an absolutely incredibly good game. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy playing it all the time. So what I wanted to actually say is the cool aspect about, about this game as well is at the end, the way you actually score points is you count money and you count points and whatnot but the poverty that you have at the end you'll have to be very careful because it doesn't count how much poverty you have it only counts of how much poverty you have compared to other people mm. so if everybody like if i have five poverty and fortis has six poverty the poverty that matters is the poverty that's above everybody else so if you have you know if you're the only unlucky one and you have 11 and everybody else has 10 then you're the one that is going to get the minus points for the poverty mm. which is Nice. <laughs> you can find the game quite cheap if it is on deal. I think we picked up our copy for £12 new, which is amazing. That's amazing, yeah. And it has very nice art as well. Can I just show you? And that, yes, it's a very it nice book. It opens like a here. book. Yes. It's very nice. One negative about the game of London is that uh, it will play well if all the players on the table know the game equally because it's about a, a little bit of about knowing, knowing the cards the, as well. It's mainly about knowing the cards, mm. really. So I, I don't tend to use this, uh, to play this game with new players because I don't think it will be an equally good experience across the table, around the table. Unless you play with all non-experienced mm. players and then you all will be rubbish and <laughs> <laughs> you all have a good experience. Next up is The Arrival. This is a two to four player game published in 2016. And what you technically do in this game is you're the Celtic people, tribes, and you are trying to fight for control and you try to cooperate with your other people around that they're already in there uh, to fend off the invading Fomori, I think they're called, which mm. is like some, some sort of monsters. monsters. Still, it's a it's still it's a competitive game, it's not a cooperative game by any means. Yeah, but you don't want to yeah. have too many of the monsters and then, you know, they kill everybody because then everybody loses. So you're kind of like, you know, killing some, but don't letting your opponent win. <laughs> exactly. It's an area majority game as well, you try to control different places, a bit of hand management, and the cool aspect of hand management, because every round you play four cards, which have three rows, but you only activate two of these three rows, and uh, you know you activate the whole row of four cards, but you don't activate, and each row gives you different benefits. So I like this aspect of the game, but I don't really like any other aspect of the game. <laughs> I think the game is a bit too simplistic for what it offers like with the area majority mm. and I think that the Fomoria is fairly easy to kill and you can build quite a nice engine in there so you can with your cards because you kind of pile them up and you do that action so it can become quite powerful yes. you can collect little tokens as well that give you either strength or defense or I'm not entirely mm. sure mm. but something along those lines but they do help you along the way and the map I think it's wide enough for you to play particularly we played it at two, two yes. so I think that's not a very fair judgment 
but in two it doesn't work very very well it's fairly loose and it's quite easy to get yourself up to the top and win mm -hmm. which it happened fairly you know effortless so overall an okay game i mean we will not lose any sleep if we don't play it ever in our lives again but it's a good experience yeah. Next on our list is Brass Birmingham, the other Brass version, and uh, okay. You mean the Brass version? Well, yeah, this, this is our favorite Brass version. We really like both of them. Yes. And in particular, in Brass Lancashire, I appreciate the two-player map. Brass Birmingham doesn't have something like that. We are going to discuss about your your comment then. <laughs> but Brass Birmingham is for us the better version of Brass. Brass Birmingham is a two to four player game published in two thousand. 18 by Roxley Games. Mm -hmm. You try to build your networks, you grow your industries, and navigate the world of the Industrial Revolution. It sounds very much like very much like what you, I just said about Brass Lancashire. Lancashire it's yes. kind of the same thing, but it's instead of Lancashire, it's in Birmingham. Especially if you say Revolution with the same accent. Revolution. <laughs> That's French, I think. <laughs> I <know>. <laughs> <laughs> Again, two eras, Canal era, Train era. Again, you try to develop your industries, to build your industries and sell them. Again, shared economy across the table but also you have beer. They've taken all this like shipyard element out of it mm -hmm. so you have some selected markets around the board and Correct. around the board where you have to connect to sell and buy goods which made quite a difference and they've added some more industries onto your board. So pottery. You can, the pottery, pottery barns. It's just pottery. <laughs> oh, pottery barn forever. <laughs> but they've introduced this beer element, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the beer is this nice element. So when you, whenever you need to sell, or most of the times, because some manufacturing goods do not require beer to be sold, most on a regular yeah, basis, yeah. Most of the time when you need to sell, you need to have beer and uh, like celebration, the sell and then you, the sale and then you drink your yeah, beer yeah. and then everybody's happy. Uh, and again, you have the same kind of aspect. You have your own network or connected areas that Elena was describing earlier. Yeah, I think the same elements apply when it comes to networking and when it comes to your area and where you can build and how you sell and stuff like that. All of that applies. Mm -hmm. It's only that the cotton market doesn't exist in this game and they've di discarded the shipyards and you have some set, set dotted um, markets around where you have to connect to 100% otherwise you cannot sell, which makes it... I would say a bit more streamlined and not as aggressive as mm, Brass Lancashire. Yes. Also, and that's only my opinion, and I think I'm probably one of the only ones that would say that. Yes. Brass Lancashire, <laughs> Brass Birmingham, sorry, I'm going to try again. Brass Birmingham in two players, best experience. <laughs> okay, damn, I'm done. Next on the list is Australia with a big Z, big as my head, published in 2018 by Stronghold Games. It's a one to four player game. Again, you are in Australia. You are trying to explore and settle the alternate history in 1930 Australia as Cthulhu awakens. So you I think, think Z here stands for zombie, I want to say. I'm not I think sure. it's more like, you know, you're kind of in Australia, but you're not really in Australia. You are in Australia, but you're like, you know, fighting Cthulhu and monsters, mm. which kind of makes sense because I think they have like generous spiders and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> so I could see that being a thing, but you kind of like fight bigger monsters and stuff like that. That's kind of the thing. You fight monsters, isn't some area majority in there? Uh, there's some net network building. You develop your network to collect your resources from different areas, but the more inside you go in the in Australia compared to where your ports are, the more danger there is because you have to fight this... Uh, Full monsters. Now the thing is that, as with uh, the arrival, this is a competitive game, but it has this semi-cooperative aspect because if you don't deal with the uh, monsters, then you all lose. Nobody wins. So the monsters can win, or one player can win. And for example, this game compared to the arrival, which kind of gives you the same vibe, it's definitely a, a top up, a top up of of heaviness and heaviness? difficulty as well. Difficulty. That's mm. what I wanted to say. Heaviness, difficulty. Dif yes. Difficulty, heaviness. So mm. had our bums kicked a few times. Pretty, pretty fast <laughs> as well. Pretty smoothly. You know, we didn't really struggle very much. Bam, you're dead. So you know, if you do want something um, heavier than the arrival, I think that this is kind of like you know, a step up. Yeah, and uh, another cool aspect of this unit, of this unit, of this game, is that you can develop different military units. You mm -hmm. can have troops. You can have uh, some uh, ground vehicles, but you can even have these. How are they call zeppelins, mm, the air the zeppelin, zeppelin, yes. air units. Which I think they're all on the cover cool. as well, aren't they? Yes, exactly. Mm. They're all on the cover, and you have different characters that you can recruit and give you different uh, benefits. And uh, yeah, the next game in our list is a 2019 game published by Phalanx Games. It plays one to four, and is uh, Nanti Narking. And it plays. It takes place in um, London. In London, baby. It is yes. London. It's London, baby. In Nantinarking, 
you have to buy, bribe and murder your way to control of Victorian London's neighbourhoods. Mm -hmm. So technically you have a map of London, which is two-sided two for whatever reason, but it kind of looks the same. Well, one side is uh, more coloured region, the other side is more... Greyish. Greyish, but you have bigger borders. So technically you have a character given at the beginning of the round, at the beginning of the game, and what you try to do is you try to control neighbourhoods mm -hmm. by building in there and placing your people in there so you control that from an area majority perspective and the uh, the character that you are given at randomly at the beginning of the game has a different winning condition so that's quite important so you know which character you are nobody else knows but you know what your winning condition is and if your winning condition applies at the beginning of your round then, then you, you win. win the game and uh, also all of us have the same kind of buildings, but uh, the buildings give different abilities depending on which cards we have again for the buildings. And as we place them in different boroughs, in different areas of London, you also get the card for that area, which gives you yet again some extra benefits. Exactly. Cards are actually yours and not necessarily just yours. They're, the game allows you to steal cards from another person, exchange mm. hands galore, the money to be Steel spent money, and yes. given to somebody else. If you want to keep your boroughs covered or you want your buildings not to burn in a fire, then you will have to pay everybody money. You know, this is corruption in there and there's everything that you want in this game. There's Everything you have is not really yours because mm. somebody will steal it or will change it somehow. Or sometimes, you know, I play a card that says remove a player's figurine and I remove one of Elena's and Elena says no, because I'm playing this card and I interrupt your action, so you cannot remove my figurine from there, you have to remove something else or none at all. Which does apply, but in most cases, I mean, you can probably only do that once, or if you have a card, if somebody's not stole, stole it from you. It tends to be quite chaotic, and people just, like, you know, take your cards and, like, you have to pay everybody stuff so you don't die and you lose control over the only piece that you land that you actually have. So. It's quite a chaotic game, and on top of that, you have some bad events as well, some cards that give you some events. <laughs> and that... some dice rolling as well for the events, yes. Yes, and it's all like, oh, there's a flood, uh, roll the die three times, see where whatever floods, and it's like, I've just built that. Yes. And <laughs> there's then, nothing you can I'll, control. I'll lose, yes. Or, you know, something burns in hell, or there's the plague, or something crazy like that. So there are only bad events in there, and it happens to whomever is like built in Warminster, or stuff like that, and then you roll the die, and for whatever reason everything you've built so far just goes to waste and all the cards beautiful cards that you're just about to play they just go to waste and you're poor again out of the blue which is very really random um there's a bit of deduction in the game because you try to figure out what your opponents are which characters they are so you you're you're seeing that that opponent goes heavily on having presence out majority out of the on the board and you think they may have this character so i may need to deal this now before they the round comes again, the turn comes again, and they win, sort of. So it has this a bit of root Take that here, element, yeah. and a bit of this root element as well. So if you are, if you have a let's say some kind of this, uh, how they call it in root, uh, the cards that you win with different conditions apart from the third victory. Yeah, points. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. It's kind of kind of the same thing. The next and the last game on our list today is Anno eighteen hundred, mm -hmm. uh, published in tw only twenty twenty. Yes, it felt like I've played this game so many times. It feels mm -hmm. like we've had it for ten years at least. Well, Anno eighteen hundred, published in twenty twenty by Cosmos Games, is a one to four player game where you are trying to fulfill the wishes of your population by producing ever more luxurious goods. They ask for all kind of weird sort sort of stuff like a gramophone or brass glasses, cars. Cars, engines, Bicycles, yes. they like the whole Anything, lot, you name yes. it. They are very, very demanding, these people. Very demanding. And uh, well, the boxes, basically two to four players, but there is an official uh, solo campaign out there in BGG, so it basically a one to four player game. And in the game, you have a big tech tree, so you start with the uh, basic stuff, you know, bricks and uh, wood and uh, and cloth and uh, this kind of stuff, or grain, and then slowly, slowly you try to do some better stuff, like you, from grain you can do beer, or from uh, pork you can uh, do sausages. You so combine them and you get, make extra industries, isn't it? Exactly. You have You have your own board, which you can expand by actually getting 
building little boats that can give you either exploration tokens or they can give you trade tokens. Mm -hmm. So you have exploration boats and you have trading boats mm -hmm. uh, and like that you can expand your your map and you can get either expansions to your own map or you can get expansions to the new world which give you extra exotic ingredients like coffee beans or is it cotton? R rubber. Rubber. Uh, yes, cotton as well, yes. Cotton, yes. rubber, tobacco and stuff mm. like that. Co so, cocoa beans. Cocoa beans, cocoa beans yeah. yeah, I said that, didn't so, I? Yeah. Coffee beans? Coffee beans. Cocoa beans as well. Anyhow, Chocolate. plenty of stuff that you could build and you can only you can only build these manufacturing goods if you have these kind of ingredients mm. which can come on a card from a person or most of them will have to be acquired this way. And uh, the game has a working placement aspect as well because each industry needs uh, a particular type of workers. You mm -hmm. have farmers, you have the blue workers, you have the artisans, the engineers and the investors. But the thing is that the more cubes you have, the more cards you have on your hand and the end game conditions that you have to play all the cards from your hand or basically satisfy all the people from your hand, which is kind of cool. You can get more workers, but this prolongs the end of the game. So you have to know where to stop and when to stop getting new workers. But the other thing is that it's not like what you produce alone, but if I don't have sausages, for instance, or if I don't have beer or gin or whatever, I can see if Elena has it, if Elena produces it, I can give her a trade token from my trade ships. Oh, you mean a gold? Or a no, I give you a trade. Uh, I spend, no, you don't give me. I spend a trade token. Please, you I don't spend give a trade token. I can tell you how yes, this and I you like get this a game goal, very yeah. much. <laughs> I spend a trade token and get a gold from the bank, and this way I can use your sausages or your beer or your gin to satisfy my own people. There are people so. that want beer and gin. Yeah. <laughs> it's they, very funny, and they have like a red nose. <laughs> yeah, they look they look like drunkards. Yes, <laughs> it's a very good game. It overall is a combination of how many people you actually want to get because you don't want to have only five people. You cannot make anything in the game with five people. And it's a combination of how many people you want to get, how many poorer people and more expensive people. I mm -hmm. think that's there are two different cards. And then you have the New World cards, which give you the people from the Aboriginal people. Yeah. And how many manufacturing goods you have around and how much you can trade. So it's a combination of how much you get to actually be able to fulfill these people. Hmm. Quick top three? Yes, absolutely. So how about you? How about, what's your number three? Number three is going to be London. Oh, look at that, me too. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> we didn't talk about this, so no, this is not seriously. coming up. Yeah, London is a very good game. Uh, we really enjoyed it. It plays well at two, it plays well at three. It plays well, I mean, as long as you know the cards, it's a bit hard mm. at the beginning, but then whenever you manage to learn what the card, what each card does, and then you build an engine around it, and sometimes you can do like a little strategy mm -hmm. around, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I'll wait for this card so I can get rid of some of poverty, or I'll wait for this card so I can, or I'll take some extra cards so I can discard some paupers, because I have five paupers in my, on my hand and they're cluttering it. So, you know, you can build different strategies, which I think is awesome. And either you play with two or three players or four players, the game takes more or less the same amount of time because mm. the end game condition is to go through the deck of cards. And it takes about an hour. And it's a good, satisfying hour. Number two? I will say number, number, number two. Will you say number together? Number two is Anno. Ah, yeah, so we should have said it together. Uh, yeah, definitely. Anno. Easy peasy. Anno 1800, which by the way we have said, we should have said it's a originally from a video game, but we only have played the board game. We really enjoyed it. It's a Super very duper. It's a very different game from whatever else we have in our collection. Now that we're talking about Anno, I want to play Anno. <laughs> really? We just played a week ago. I know, but I feel like I want to play it again. <laughs> Anno is an amazing game. It's Please amazing. try it. Yeah. What's your number one? What's your number one? One, two, three? Brass, brass Birmingham. Yes, Birmingham, of course, yes. I mean, yeah. It's like Brass, I, obviously. <laughs> I don't mind playing Lancashire either, but I think Brass Birmingham is the better version, for me at least. And it's like, you know, it's like the go-to version because everybody likes it, everybody knows it, mm -hmm. and it's easy to it's it's easy to play it at any point. I'm more than happy to play Lancashire as well. It's only that most people don't really know Lancashire or the people that we play with don't really know Lancashire, so we'll just go for Brass Birmingham. Now compared to Brass, uh, no, sorry, compared to Anno or to London, Brass, Lancashire or Birmingham are quite more punishing games, mm. which we like. We're a bit masochist, right? <laughs> Please try Brass Birmingham at two. It's an amazing experience <laughs> and people will say no, but trust me, it's very good. Or try Brass Lancashire in the flip side with a two-player map. <laughs> so yeah, that's our, our Martin Wallace uh, discussion video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye. Bye.